Hey guys and gals, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. Sending me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Cilio Ties Path. So y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. It's the day of the camping trip, y'all. I right, take it you didn't pack torches then? Oh, believe me, I have I've come prepared. I simply hope we will not have to use them as all. Besides, I have other reasons for which you will just have to be patient. Oh, how mysterious! I suppose it wouldn't be a camping trip with Ty if he wasn't keeping a few tricks up his sleeves. I sighed quietly to myself before turning back to Ty with a smile. Ready when you are, Ty. Then away we go. Opening the trunk of his car revealed a variety of camping goods of which Ty had us divide up between each of our four packs to ensure each of us would be carrying their fair share. The four of us then got on board and buckled our seat belts. Ty then started the engines, and we finally began our journey as Ty drove us across both bridges, passing through the main drag of Woodcrest and then proceeding north until dense forests surrounded us in every direction. After ten, or, after ten minutes or so, Ty, park, Ty parked up on a patch of loose gravel off to the side of the road. We then disembarked, throwing our packs over our shoulders and following Ty as he led us toward a long and winding eastbound path which led us away from the road and out into the thick wilderness. Hmm. Well then, gentlemen, we have a long walk ahead of us. I do hope your packs aren't too heavy. I adjusted the straps, trying to balance the weight in such a way that would reduce the load on my shoulders. It seemed to those tie it seemed to those tie may have slightly overestimated my capacity. Without wanting to disappoint him, however, I gave him a confident thumbs up. Just right, thanks. I'm ready when you are. Me too. Right on, ready to go. Excellent. Then let us be on our way. The four of us began the adventure in earnest, trudging along the dirt path in an orderly fashion with Ty at the helm. The forests surrounding us were alive with the sounds of wildlife, juxtaposed by the foreign sounds of our voices as we struck up conversation to help pass the time. Dude, this place is totally beautiful. Summervale is, like, totally boring by comparison, man. Indeed. In my opinion, there are few places more beautiful than Woodcrest on this entire continent. I take it you were glad that you moved here then, Russell. Oh, totally. It seems like you're, it seems like super cool here so far. I ran into Axel. Things could be off to a better start. You mentioned the two of you were childhood friends, did you not? How did the two of you first meet? Did you become friends right away? Yep, so, like, we both went to the same school and were in the same years. I even shared classes a couple times early on when we were, like, super young. In Somervale, yes. The two of you were born there. That's right, dude. I lived there my whole life, too. Well, until, like, a couple days ago. Same, except I moved here when I turned 18. That was a bit over a year ago now. Well, a happy belated birthday to you then, Axel. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, hey, I just noticed. What, like, happened to your glasses, Ax? Oh, I wear contacts now. I just kept breaking my glasses, and it was getting super expensive to keep buying new ones. Second, y'all. Water time. All right, guys and gals, and we are back. Same way you broke your phone, my dude. <laughs> yeah, usually. But hold on, weren't you, like, wearing a pair earlier? Yep. I have to take my contacts out when I go swimming. Oh, I get it. The contacts are great. They're a great look for you, dude. Thanks. Yeah, as a little kid, I had these big glasses that were, like, way too big for his head. He looked like such a nerd. Weirdly enough, though, we never really became friends until later when he joined the swimming club. I was like a token insert on account of being a shark and all, but I wasn't really that into it. Then Axel joined, and he wiped the floor with all of us. I couldn't just, like, stand by and be shown up by the nerdy kid. So I started taking it seriously. I was never quite as good as he was, but I got pretty close. Hilariously enough, it was through the... Oh, it was through, it was through trying to kick each other's asses that we kind of became friends in the first place. We started hanging out outside class. It turned out we had, like, heaps in common. We even collected cards from the same card game and, well, and would battle each other all the time. We never really knew the rules properly, so we just sort of played our own version of it. My mom didn't like the cards so much because they had monsters and stuff on them, but Dad would slip me packs without her noticing. Oh yeah, whenever I would stay the night, we used to play them under the blankets of torches, just in case you walked in and confiscated them. Interestingly enough, that's like exactly what we ended up happening, right, Axe? Oh yeah, she did. She's gonna toss them out, but Dad got them back for me. I don't know what we will. I don't know what would have been worse, what she caught us doing or what she thought she had caught us doing. Before she pulled the blanket off, but she was like. She was all like, do you, do I have to give you boys the talk? <laughs> yeah, that was... But yeah, after that, we just played at my house instead. My parents are pretty cool and even let us play at the dining table. It sounds as though the two of you have plenty of fond memories. <laughs> yeah, 
We even got into exploring together. We'd go out looking for all these cool places and find all these interesting things. Do you still go exploring, Russ? It ain't as fun without you, my dude. It's been a little while. You should come with us. Dom and I go out exploring all the time. Heh, <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. Count me in, dude. Yay! Russell and Axel shared matching toothy grins as our party progressed slowly through the forest. In every direction, there was only forest as far as the eye could see. I had no expectation that we'd reach our destination anytime soon. So, any, so anyway, other than that, Axe and, Axe and I went through high school and graduated together. Then Axe moved up here. We fell out of touch for a while, until today, of course. Say, Axe, do you uh, visit your parents back home often? Yep, all the time. I was thinking of spending a night there soon, actually. Great, how are they? Same as usual, when I moved to Woodcrest, Dad finally convinced Mom to get a phone, so we could stay in touch. She really hated it at first, but now she's obsessed with this game she found. She keeps telling me what level she's up to. I think Dad had some regrets. My goodness, your parents sound like quite the pair of characters. They're like twice as intense as you can imagine, my dude. But you never left Axel's house without some kind of story to tell. Anyway, Ax, how did you meet Dom? You two seem like a great fit. You mean Dom fits great inside you? Eh. Dom is amazing. He's so smart, and all I can do is cool. And all I can do all this cool stuff. He comes exploring with me heaps, and we've even found a house to move into together. Oh, that's so cute, Axe. I knew you'd find yourself a wonderful boyfriend. Huh? B boyfriend? Oh, um, we aren't. I could have sworn. Sorry, Axe. Think I like misread the room a bit. Oh, it's okay. Please don't be sad. You just friends then? Yep, I, I think. I see. Well, he seems like a really good friend. The atmosphere among our group suddenly grew a little tense. Dom had asked me to keep an eye on him. I knew for a fact that Axel liked him. He had told, him this, told me this himself. But with what he just said, I was overcome with a sense of doubt. But why? Was Axel simply playing it cool, or maybe just maybe my assumption had been wrong? Was it possible that Axel had feelings for Russell once, and that his arrival here in Woodcrest may have reawakened them? Anyway, moving right along from that, what's the deal with you two? Hunter and I. Yeah. Well, I suppose you could say we are seeing one another. It is early days yet, yet mind. You could say that we are still in the process of finding our footing. Congratulations, you two dudes make like a totally handsome couple. Heh, <laughs> thanks. Indeed, thank you. Hunter is quite the catch, is he not? Not as much of a catch as you are. Remember, I will fight you on this if that's what it takes. Please don't hurt each other. It's okay, Axe. They're like just joking around. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Nobody's gonna get hurt today. Oh, good. I was so worried. Do you guys mind me asking, like, how you met? Well, I just moved here myself, actually. My best friend Diego has lived here for a while now. I guess we sort of reunited, kind of like you and Axel have. Oh, the dude who kept making dirty jokes, right? That certainly sounds like our Diego. Yeah, tell me about it. Anyway, he's been working for Ty for a while now, and he sort of made the introduction to help me find work. Before you know it, I was enthralled by his charming personality and addicted to the sight of his flawless pecs. He ticked every box, I guess. It was a little strange at first, being so much younger than he is. I wasn't sure I was even on his radar, but one night I mustered up the courage and tried my moves. And what magnificent moves they were. What else could I have done but, been, but become completely captivated by his majesty? I burst into laughter. Ty was laying it on more than a little thick. My moves were awkward and hopeless, and you know it. I was just lucky that my interest in you was mutual. <laughs> you sell yourself far too short, my dear, but yes... I, too, find myself similarly captivated and more than a little intrigued. I simply could not pass upon, pass upon such a wonderful opportunity. Since then, we have been finding our groove, so to speak. But I feel absolute confidence in my decision. Hunter is the right person at the right time, and I am so very, very fortunate that we found one another. Aw, you guys are so cute. You two dudes sure seem like a surefire hit to me. You'll totally make a super amazing couple. I am most pleased our relationship has your confidence. I looked up at Ty, smiling happily, and he gazed back, a satisfied, loving look in his eyes. Couldn't ever, couldn't get over how lucky I was. He was so refined and charismatic, so loving and attentive, so sweet and flirtatious. His eyes, such a gorgeous shade of violet, and the way his stripes accented every muscle in his body, Almost like priceless artwork, his every muscle chiseled to perfection, his glutes so flawlessly round and firm. His cock, just the thought of it, drove me around the bend. 
His flawless foreskin. With it, his fur grew softer and softer as it ascended his shaft. Where he throb inside me once he finished. Is there something amiss, my dear? Your eyes seem to have gone slightly crooked. Oh? He'd gotten carried away in my own little world. The thing Ty stepped in when he stepped in when he had, as I could feel the beginnings of an erection forming in my pants. Something that would have been so incredibly mortifying if Russell or Axel had spotted it. Sorry, it was just uh, lost in thought, I guess. Um, anything else you guys want to know? Yeah, actually, I, you said that, like, you only moved here recently yourself, right? Right, dude? So before you arrived here, were you, where were you living exactly? Sidonia City. Wow, really? Woodcrest seems like, must seem like the total boonies by comparison. It's smaller, sure, but honestly, I find it better in every conceivable way. Whoa, dude, for a small town kid like me? Somewhere like Sidonia seems like I don't know the place to be, I guess. What's so bad about it? God, where do I even start? It's impossible to get anywhere with the traffic how it is, and you can forget about public transport. It's even worse. The quality of housing there is really dire, and it costs so, so much. I moved to Sidonia when I got accepted to university there. It was one of the best ranked in the country, so I figured it'd be a surefire hit. I guess it wasn't so bad. I met Diego there, wound up dorming with him for two years until he graduated and moved over here. I graduated a year later and accepted an internship for a software company. They paid me peanuts while hovering the promise of a better pay rate and a promotion in front of my nose like some kind of sadistic carrot on a stick while the boss screamed at us over every little thing. I was part of a group of new graduates, all interns just like me. In the end, I was the only one that hadn't, that hadn't walked. That's, and that meant I got the ire intended for everyone else. Then I'd go home to this filthy, leaky apartment and borrow money intended for bills just so I could afford to eat. It all got too much by the end. In a move of desperation, I called Diego. I asked if he had a couch I could crash on for a bit. It turned out he had a whole spare room. And I was a, and I was welcome for as long as I liked. So I quit. No notice. Sold my things. Got the hell out. I woke up that morning in that leaky, miserable apartment and fell asleep bundled up in Diego's warm bedsheets. So far, it's the best decision I've made in years. After all, if I hadn't, I would I'd have never met the world's most handsome tiger. I nudged Ty cheekily between the ribs, and he responded by grinning from ear to ear, a grin so infectious that it spread to each and every one of us. As he smiled, I couldn't help but being in awe of just how incredibly handsome he was, and just how lucky I was to be with someone so, so unbelievably sexy. So I shook the thoughts from my head, not allowing myself to fall into the same trap once more. We'd only done it once, and, and yet Ty had succeeded in being the very best I'd ever had by a considerable distance. While well, taking things slowly was without a doubt without a doubt, a smart decision, I couldn't help but wonder when our next encounter would be. Sounds like you really lucked out, Hunter. That's such a cool story, and what a happy ending. If I'm honest, I was having some, like, doubts. That coming here was going to be the right move. But hearing your story? But, and have an axe here with me? I really think I'm going to be totally happier, too. Yay, we can all be friends and hang out together. We're going to have so much fun. Indeed. So, Russell, now that you are living in Woodcrest, what are your plans going forward? Any aspirations? I don't know yet, my dude. I was living with my parents back home and working part-time at a liquor store. Not exactly my true, like, call, my dudes. I didn't pay rent, so I managed to save up a bit before coming here. So I guess I'm, like, biding my time or something like that, enjoying a vacation. I even signed up for a bunch of different events and competitions to, like, keep me on my toes. Next up is the combat tournament heats on Friday. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our Silver Tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for going bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our Gold Tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for submitting to Ultimate Tier anyway. If you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our Not Safe for More contents as little as $5 already. I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye